All right, guys, what is up? I am PDFTCG uh, doing a kind of a channel update as well as a review of the leaked cards for both Chaos Galaxy Pack 3 and the new starter deck for Chaos Galaxy. So just a quick channel update. I do have another package coming uh, from the Game Crafter. And as soon as it gets here, I will be um, doing weekly uploads. So once a week, probably on Saturday, um, I will be uploading either a pack opening, some kind of deck profile, maybe even a uh, battle video if I can work something out over Skype or something. So definitely be looking forward to that in the future and getting on into the new cards for Chaos Galaxy. Um, we'll be looking at the spoiled cards for uh, pack three first. Um, so the first card that he shows off is Stekataka. Um, it's a four star Gaios creature. It is 8060. Uh, this creature permanently gains 20 power and health for every star that you have at the time that is played. Um, so to get this thing, and I think that's after, um, after, like, the you pay the four stars. So you would need nine stars to get the, like, five times 20. So if you had ten stars after you played it, then it would get 200, 200. And then, yeah, um, it seems kind of situational. Um, seems like it'd be kind of rare that you'd really want to play this. Um, with that being said, though, um, it is a Gaios creature, which has the benefit of you being able to basically search it out from your deck at any point using the planet. So it being situational is kind of okay. Um, you can just like have one in your deck and then... At mo considering it's a four star and you're probably going to be playing a decent number of four stars you can basically search it out at any point um, so if it does become advantageous to play it then you can do it that way um, overall I think it's a fairly weak card but it's a common so that's okay um, I am happy with like the uh, the planet that it's on though I think that that was definitely uh, the, the best planet that it uh, could have been put on um, next we have Gamba Jabble, I believe is the Gamba Jabble, yeah. Uh, it is a Sindian creature with 70 power, 160 health for 3 stars. Um, overall that's fairly low stats, but you're primarily playing it for its ability, which is once per turn you can kill a 1 star creature on your planet and pay 3 stars to draw 2 cards. Um, so... Or to draw two cards. I think I might have said draw three cards, but it's draw two cards. I'm not sure. Um, so overall, you're basically losing a card and paying a total of four stars because you would have had to play the creature to draw two cards, which is pretty good. Um, that's really solid. The thing I really like about this is how it interacts with the um, the planet Sindian. So up until now, I felt that this Sindian had a really cool planet ability. However, it didn't have cards that really, really uh, utilized it terribly well. So you had, you know, you had big creatures, and then the ability would allow the big creatures to defend the smaller creatures. Sure, okay. But if you have a elite Trangel on the field, do you care if they kill your two-star creature? Probably, probably not. Um, so you didn't, in most situations, you didn't really have anything that you wanted to protect. Um, now with this, if you, um, if your opponent just allows it to sit on the field, which they may have to do if it's sitting behind an elite drangel, suddenly you're drawing a bunch of cards every turn and it becomes a serious threat. So. Um, I like this card, and I, again, really like the planet that it was put on. Okay, next up we have Extra Extra Small Rescue. 
Um, when your opponent would attack your planet using a creature with five or more stars, free play a one star creature from your galaxy, your opponent can then choose to attack with their creature again. So, this is okay, I guess. Um, I really can't think of a lot of situations where this is terribly useful. Maybe if in set three there's some like one star creatures that actually want to be in the graveyard, that would be kind of cool. Uh, especially if, ooh, if you had stuff that, like, one-star creatures that wanted to be in the graveyard combined with this and Gamba Jabble, that would be pretty cool. Um, otherwise, all this really does is it blocks an attack. Eh. It, it's just not that great. Um, unless, like I said, there's, you know, stuff that actually wants to use this. Really, all you're going to end up doing is using a card to block an attack. You could be playing, like, Beast of the Black Hole or something instead. Uh, next up, we have Boominator. Um, this card is actually really, really strong, I think. So it's a 150, 220 health, 5-star Barrow creature, which on its own isn't amazing. But it says only once you can permanently give one creature on your planet an extra 150 power. So if you don't even have like another creature to really combo this with, then it's just a 300-220 Barrow creature for 5 stars, which is just good. If you have another creature, then you have more options and it becomes even better, um, but there's hardly ever a time where you wouldn't want this thing. Alright, next up we have Ember Soul, who is just a vanilla 3-star Shios creature. He's 180, 140. Um, fairly average stats for a 3-star creature. With 3-star creatures like this, I feel like you want to have either the bulk of their um, stat points either in power or in health, so that you have at least one um, decent stat, so that it can either defend against like 4 and higher creatures, or it can actually like trade with them. Um, this is fairly even. It's slightly higher on the power. Obviously, it's Shios. I would put this at a slightly below average three star creature, probably. There's not a whole lot to say about it. Next up, we have Mystical Relic Rainbow Quill. Um, both players choose one card in their hand and randomly select one card in their hand. Those cards are shuffled into their owner's galaxies, then both players draw two cards. So ultimately it's a minus one um, that potentially helps your opponent, potentially hurts your opponent, and possibly hurts you a little bit. Mm. I, I don't see a real reason, to, real reason to play this. If it said put it in your graveyard, this could do stuff. Or what, whatever he calls the, the graveyard discard pile, whatever. Um, this could do stuff if it sent it to the graveyard. Um, but since it doesn't, there's not really a reason to play it. Since it's a symmetrical effect that you have to play, so you're minus oneing yourself, there's, I, I don't particularly see a reason to play this. With that being said, the artwork looks really cool. Uh, I'm not usually super worried about the artwork, but I actually like the way that this looks a lot, so this might be my favorite artwork on a card so far. Lastly, we have the Anti-Conjurer. Uh, it is a activator card that basically says when your opponent plays a zone, you can remove that zone. So this is actually really strong, I think, and is going directly into my deck. Um, it synergizes particularly well with what my deck does. Um, I think you guys will see that once I actually post a uh, a deck, like a deck profile or whatever. Um, yeah, so I think that's all the cards from the pack three uh, teased cards. I guess we'll get on into the starter deck cards now. So the first card is Strange Violet Boulder. 
Uh, it is a 100-200 three-star creature on the planet Barrow, as will, you know, pretty much all these cards, I think. Uh, once per turn, except the turn you play this creature, you can toss a coin. If it lands on heads, kill this card and add one boulder dragon creature from your galaxy to your hand. If tails, this creature gains... I think it says 50 health, but it's actually covered by the uh, card sleeve there. So, as I said before, if you have like a smaller 2-3 star creature, you want um, their health or power to be lopsided. You want I feel like you want all of the stats to be in one place. Um, this creature does that, clearly. It is a 100-200, so I think that that's in its favor. Um, you can actually, even though it's a 3-star creature, you can kind of keep this on the field. Um, with that being said, you can't use its coin flip ability on the turn that you played. I'm not sure if you can use that on your opponent's turn. Uh, if... I don't know. It doesn't specify your turn. So if Zack could clarify that, that would change how good this card is pretty drastically. Because if you have to wait um, through your opponent's turn, so you have to like let it live a turn and then you have a 50% chance of getting to do a thing, then that's not great. But if you have a 50% chance of doing a thing, and then a 50% chance of getting 50 health to possibly live through your opponent's first attack on it, that that makes it significantly better. Um, but yeah, overall, I think this is a pretty okay card. I don't think it's amazing, but you'll almost certainly be running it in the uh, Boulder Dragon deck. Can't see a reason not to. Up next, we have Baby Boulder Dragon. Uh, when this creature is killed, whilst you have another Boulder Dragon creature on your planet, gain four stars. So... It's a two-star creature with 70, 110. Its stats aren't great, but that's fine. You're not really using it, you know, as a, a beat stick or anything. I think the thing to note here is that it says when this creature is killed whilst you have another... Wait, while the creature is killed whilst you have another boulder creature. I think this is a mistake. I just realized this. This does not say when this creature on your planet is killed. Um, killed is what he uses for everything. So if it's discarded or if it's um, sent from your, uh, your galaxy to the graveyard, that's still killed. Um, I don't think that's intentional. Um... But what you want to do with this thing, if you can do it that way, you can use um, the card that lets you send a card directly from your deck to the graveyard for a free four stars. Um, or you could even mill it with like Quatreaga or um, Galifaction and get a free four stars. I don't know if that's what he intended. The wording on the card might be changed. If it is, you can still use the um, the. I, I should really know the names of these cards before I start talking, but um, the card that lets you sacrifice a Barrow creature to destroy cards on your opponent's side of the field, um, you can use that, tribute it, and then get stars back, destroy creatures. Pretty good. Um, Overall, I would say that this card is rather good if the wording on it doesn't change and it works the way that I think it currently does, and okay if it doesn't work that way. Um, overall, I don't think if you play this and then you have like a boulder dragon on your side of the field, I don't think your opponent is going to attack your baby boulder dragon. It, it just doesn't seem like there would be a reason for them to do that. So I don't think that... I think you would have to set up a way to actually get these stars from this. Okay, uh, next up we have a Boulder Dragon. It's a 190 to 10 health um, 4 star Barrow creature. It has almost completely average stats. They're not weighted in any special way. <sighs> 
it's just really basic, there's not a lot to say about it, it's fine. Big Boulder Dragon. Um, this is a 6 star, more or less a 260 power, 320 health creature, we'll be looking at that in a second. All barrow creatures on your planet gain 50 power, that's why I say it's a 260 power creature. Um, whenever another boulder dragon creature is cosplayed to your planet, you can kill one attachment or resource card on your opponent's planet. So, this card is really, really good. Um, so, for a 6 star, it has a total of almost 600, which is kind of what you look for. You look for a total power and health of the number of stars times 100. So it's slightly lower, but it boosts all your Barrow creatures. And whenever you play a Boulder Dragon card, you can remove a resource or attachment card on your opponent's planet. Um, it would be nice if it said on the field. So you could hit things like KO and um, Slush Infestation on your field, but this is still really, really solid. Um, probably my favorite card in the deck. Okay, so the final creature in the starter deck that he's revealed is Berserk Boulder Dragon. It is a... and I, I hope that he realizes that... I don't think he spelled Berserk right. I hope he realizes that. That might be intentional. That might be something that gets fixed. I don't know. Um, when this creature is played, count all of your killed Boulder Dragon creatures. If this creature is still on your planet, after that many turns, kill it. So, as I said, we would be looking for approximately an 800 stat total on this thing. Probably a little bit lower, as he seems to... As the creatures get bigger, he takes a, a few of the stat points away. Um, probably for balance reasons. So, this thing is an 850 stat total for 8 stars, which is really, really, really good. Um, his health is lower than his power, which is a little bit weird for um, a bear creature, although I guess that's fairly good, actually, um, just because you want, I feel like you want your bigger creatures to have, well, I guess you really want your bigger creatures to have more health, but you can swap it, so it, it's okay, it doesn't matter that much. Um, ultimately, his power and health are going to be bigger than most things your opponent can possibly play. Um, obviously it has the drawback of uh, if it stays on the field too long then it gets removed for free however it specifies your turns so what that means is, is that if you have four of the cards in your graveyard then this is going to be on the field for a total of eight turns and if your opponent hasn't answered this card in that long then it's probably just going to kill them so, I don't think its ability is that big of an issue, um, particularly with the um, activator card that comes in the deck. Uh, ultimately, I think this is just a pretty good, really big creature. Not a whole lot more to say about it. Next up, we have a permanent resource uh, support card for the Boulder Dragon guards. After you've played the required amount of Boulder Dragon creatures whilst this card is on your planet, apply each of these abilities. One, when you have a bear creature on your planet is killed by its own ability, you draw one card. I think that's what the the egg and the berserk That's just the egg and the berserk uh, boulder dragon, isn't it? Unless he has something else in the structure deck or in set three or something. I don't think there's really anything else in Barrow that sacrifices a creature. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, so it'll... Th I imagine this card will replace itself. Um, all Barrow creatures on your planet gain 50 health. Sure. All Boulder Dragon creatures on your planet cannot be killed by activator cards. That one's pretty good, but it requires 5. Um, I think it's okay. Like I said, it probably replaces itself. The only issue here is that it is a permanent resource, which means one, 
it, it might get removed before you get to five, and its other two abilities are just like okay. And I'm not sure how good permanent resources are in general. Um, like I said, they can be removed fairly easily. And then on top of that, they since you're going to have to play another resource zone, it effectively costs four stars to play this card. I'm not super sold on it. I would probably run a copy in the deck, but I don't think it's one of the better cards. And lastly, we have the activator card that uh, has been spoiled. It is uh, Go Berserk. When you cosplay a boulder dragon or big boulder dragon to your planet, instantly kill that creature to free play one berserk boulder dragon, which is either killed or in your hand. Also, double the amount of turns it would remain on your planet. So, as I said, this doubles the amount of time that the berserk boulder dragon can be on your planet, which means if you have two cards in your graveyard, two boulder dragon cards, to clarify, and then you play this, that means you have three, and then you double that, which means you get six. So this basically says it's on the field until your opponent kills it, more or less. Because that's just with two. If you've got four in there already, then you sacrifice a creature that puts it at five, that's ten turns. Ten of your turns. Um, also, this can bring it back from the graveyard, which means really you could run two of these and then one berserk boulder dragon if you wanted to. Because um, it's going to come back no matter what. This, this says you will get to play it. Because it can come from basically anywhere. Actually, just either killed or in your... Oh, it can't come from the deck. Okay, I was thinking this brought it from the deck. I'm like, this card is insane. Okay, so it's from your hand or that has been killed. Still, um, you can dump the... Uh, either play it and get it killed or dump it in some way and then you have it no matter what. So this card is super good. Definitely a two of, in my opinion, in every Boulder Dragon deck. Might be the best card in the deck. Probably is the best card in the deck. Um, I don't think it's quite as cool as the big Boulder Dragon as far as just what it does. But it's probably the, like, just power level wise, the best card in the deck. Alright guys, that's about it for this video. Uh, thanks anybody who watched this long. Um, I know it was about like 20 plus minutes of me talking about cardboard, but uh, I do appreciate it. Um, and as always, thank you and have a nice day.